Okay, let's talk about skin lesions. Grab your piece of paper and let's go. Hello and welcome to MK's Medical Review Series. My name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. This is a series on my YouTube channel where we we'll look at medical topics in depth. Today we're going to be looking at skin lesions, dermatology pretty much. So if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon to be receiving notifications of such videos every time I post. Please tell a friend to tell a friend that we are covering internal medicine subspecialty topics. So we have started with dermatology on the channel. So please drop a comment for some support, drop a like and also share the link to this video. If you think it's going to help someone who's taking a dermatology course or someone who's doing internal medicine subspecialties. So today we're going to be looking at skin lesions. So whenever you're talking about a skin lesion, you're just pretty much referring to an area of disease. Usually it's going to be a small area that's affected. If it's a larger area that's affected and it's widespread, whether it may, may it be due to a primary pathology or a secondary factor that may be um, modifying the way the primary pathology is looking like, for example, scratching or infections, then you refer to that as an eruption or a rash. So note the difference between a, a lesion, a skin lesion, and an eruption or a rash. A rash usually tends to be widespread. Then the morphological types of skin lesions are going to be based on predominantly three things. They're going to be based on the diameter of the lesion. So most literature actually use either 0.5 to or 1 centimeter as a cutoff point. So we shall use 1 centimeter in this lecture. And of course, the second thing is the relationship of the skin lesion to the surface of the skin. Is it flat? Is, is it like if you were to close your eyes and palpate over the skin, would you feel any bump? Or is it completely flat? Then, of course, what is the composition of the lesion? Is it filled with flu uh, fluid? Is it filled with solid? I don't know what's happening to my grammar. Then, of course, some diseases may have multiple types of lesions. They may have a combination of the lesions that we're going to talk about. For example, you may have macules and papules at the same time. You call that as a macular papular rash. You may sometimes have vesicles and bullas or a vesicular bullus, a type of um, presentation. And, of course, this may is very common in some skin diseases. And of course, skin lesions may be primary or they may be secondary. Rem recall that primary are often due to the disease itself. Secondary are due to certain factors such as scratching, such as infections that may be there on the skin lesions. So here are examples of primary skin lesions that we'll look at and secondary skin lesions. The primary skin lesions include macules, patches, papules, nodules, plaques, vesicles, bulla, pastules, cysts, wheels as well as ulcers. Then of course the secondary skin lesions are going to include scales, crusts, lichenifications, fissures, erosions, ex uh, excoriations, eschars, atrophy, scar, ecchymosis, petechiae, purpura, telangiectasia. So we'll begin with the macule. So a macule is just simply a flat, non-palpable, well circumscribed skin lesion that's obviously less than one centimeter so if you were to close your eyes and actually brush your skin against the macule or brush your hands against the macule then you wouldn't be able to feel anything because it's non-palpable it's completely flat now how do we know that this is a macule it's because it's going to have a different appearance from the surrounding skin it may either be hyperpigmented or hypopigmented examples of conditions where you have macules include tinea vesicola vitiligo where you have hypopigmented macules Freckles that may be pigmented, capillary hemangiomas, which may be reddish in color or erythematous. Here's an example of a macule on a patient. Here's a cartoon drawing. And of course, here is the macule over there. Then you may have a patch. You can think of a patch as the bigger variant of a macule or the bigger brother, quote unquote, the bigger brother of uh, a macule. So a patch is just simply a flat well circumscribed, non-palpable skin lesion more than one centimeter. So example that we see patches in Intinia vesicola, and of course here's an example of a patch in a patient. Then moving on to a papule, so remember that the patches and the macules are non-palpable. The 
papules, you can palpate them. So if you close your eyes and move your hand across the, the surface of this skin lesion, you will feel a bump. So this is a small palpable solid elevation of skin that is less than one centimeter in diameter. If it's flat topped, it's seen in lichen planus. You may also see it in xanthomas. Of course, they are dome shaped. Here's an image to show you what a papule looks like. Then of course a nodule is like a bigger variant or the bigger brother of a papule. So this is a solid elevation of skin, a greater than one centimeter in diameter. And of course nodules are going to be involving any layers of the skin and they can be edematous or they can be solid. Of course they are seen in conditions such as dermatofibromas as well as secondary deposits. Here is an image here at the bottom to show you what a nodule looks like. Moving on to a plaque, which is also another raised type of skin lesion. So this is a raised area of skin lesion with a flat top. You can think of this like a plateau. So this is a diameter that's greater than one centimeter, but rarely does its height exceed 0 0.5 centimeters. So they are not taller than 0 0.5, but they have a diameter that is greater than one centimeter. This is seen in conditions such as plague psoriasis and mycosis fungoides. And of course, here is an example of what a plague looks like. But of course, it's very difficult to appreciate the elevation here because this image is taken in two dimensions and not really 3D like this one that's seen on the left of the screen. Then you also have vesicles and bulla. So the vesicle is like the smaller version. The bulla is like the bigger version. So these are just simply fluid filled blisters of a diameter less than one centimeter if you're talking about a vesicle, diameter greater than one centimeter if you're talking about a bulla. So the clear fluid accumulates within or below the epidermis. Remember that the skin is going to be having predominantly three layers, the epidermis, the dermis, and the subcutaneous layer. And of course, if the um, this skin lesion accumulates within the dermis, you call that as an intradermal uh, or intraepidermal uh, blister. If it's below the dermis, you call that as a subepidermal blister. For example, in dermatitis herpetiformis, where you see this subepidermal blisters. You may see bulla in conditions like pemphigus uh, vulgaris as well as bullus pemphigoid. Here's an example of what a bullet looks like, pretty huge. As you can see even here on this cartoon diagram, it's pretty huge. And then the vesicles are much smaller and the vesicles are much smaller in that picture. Then the moving on, you have pastures. This is just simply a visible collection of free pus in the blister. And then of course the pustule may indicate infections in conditions like furuncles. And then this is not always the case. In a condition that's known as pustular psoriasis, where the patient may have these pustules, especially on the hands, the pustules are not infectious as opposed to other conditions where they are actually infectious. Then you may have cysts, which is a fluid filled or semi solid cavity surrounded by an epithelial lining, for example, an epidermal sebaceous cyst. So, this is an example of a cyst. Then, of course, a wheel, which is also known as a hive, H I V E S, is a transitory compressible papule or plaque of dermal edema. It may be red or white in color and it's usually signifying urticaria or a condition that's known as urticaria. This is what wheels look like. Please comment in the section below what wheels or hives are in your local language. I'm really thrilled to actually find out what you actually call them. Then you have an ulcer, which is just a circumscribed area of skin loss extending through the epidermis into the dermis. So this is just simply a break in the continuity of the epithelium with associated microscopic death of tissue. So remember that ulcers may be as a result of uh, impairment in the vascular as well as nutrient supply to the skin. And they're often due to uh, peripheral arterial disease. Here's a picture of what an ulcer will look like. So those are the primary skin lesions that we have looked at. Now we shall move on to the secondary skin lesions and what they look like. So beginning with the scale, this is just simply loose or adherent flakes composed of the stratum corneum cells. Remember that these are the cells of the um, epidermis. The epidermis, whether it's thick skin or thin skin, Thick skin has five layers, thin skin has four layers. Then the term hyperkeratotic can be used for small areas of thick adherent scales, like for example in psoriasis. So this is a patient that had psoriasis. You can see these whitish scales that are covering this lesion. Then of course you may have crusts which are dried yellow, brown, sometimes black, or green surface deposits of serum, pus, and or blood. This is seen in a condition that's known as pemphigus vulgaris, which is an example of a blistering uh, condition. 
then lichenification is just simply thickening of the epidermis with accentuation of skin markings. As we can see, these lines of langa here appear much more prominent. This is often as a result of either excessive rubbing or excessive scratching. This is seen in, a, in conditions like atopic dermatitis. So this is a child that had atopic dermatitis. Then of course, a fissure. This is a linear, sharply defined, deep crack in the skin. An example is callus. So we can see callus here affecting the heel of this patient. Moving on to erosions and excoriations, an erosion is just simply a localized loss of the superficial epidermis. Take note between the difference between ulcers and erosions. Ulcers actually extend even to the dermis. Uh, erosions are much more superficial. An example is a lichenoid drug reaction and then excoriation is uh, pretty much scratch marks. So they can also be seen in lichenoid drug reactions. So here's a patient that had a lichenoid drug reaction. As you can see these lines, the scratch marks we can also see these excoriations over here so this is what uh, excoriations look like this is what erosions also look like then moving on to escars this is just simply black hard crust resulting from tissue necrosis of the epidermis and o the dermis it may be seen in self-induced injury it may be seen in third degree burns and this is what escar actually looks like this uh, this was actually quite extensive in this patient. Then atrophy is just simply thinning of the skin. So it may be seen in conditions like lichen sclerosis as seen in the picture here. So as you can see, this area of the skin appears much different from the surrounding area uh, of this lesion. And of course, a scar, which is just simply depressed or elevated proliferation of connective tissue that has pretty much replaced inflamed or traumatized skin. So the scars could either be depressed as shown in the image here on the left, or they can be Elevated, as shown here, these are known as hypertrophic scars. Remember the difference between a hypertrophic scar and a keloid? Hypertrophic scars are usually confined to the margins of the wound, while as keloids can exceed the margins of the wound. Then, of course, ecchymosis is just simply a large confluent area of a purpura or ideally a bruise. Then, petechia pinpoint sized macules of blood in the skin. Then, purpura are just simply these large macules or papules of blood. Uh, in the skin, which do not blanch with pressure. Blanching is just simply be decolorizing when you apply pressure. Then, of course, telangiectasia is abnormally visible dilatation of blood vessels. I don't know if you can see this, the dilatation of these blood vessels on the skin here. If your image quality is very low, please enhance the image quality on the video. Then you will be able to appreciate what I'm telling you or what I'm pointing out on this image on the right. Then... Those were the secondary skin lesions. So when we are describing skin lesions, we have to note other principles or other factors of the skin lesions. One important factor is the color of the skin lesion. So this can actually correlate with the underlying pathophysiological changes of the underlying disease. So we can use the terms hyperpigmented or hypopigmented to denote whether the skin lesion is darker than the surrounding skin or lighter than the surrounding skin, uh, respectively. So hyperpigmented if it's darker, hypopigmented if it's lighter. Then of course, uh, uh, erythema or erythematous can be used to uh, describe red hues or reddish color, which is primarily due to uh, dilated uh, blood vessels in the dermis. Then moving on, we also can use the shape of a lesion in aiding in the diagnosis of some conditions. Remember that some uh, common skin disorders such as tinea corporis have typical uh, presentations with annular lesions and are characterized by a, a characteristic shape so it may be discoid or round so these are round with uniform appearance throughout the lesion like for example numular dermatitis it may be oval with a uniform appearance throughout the lesion in petriasis rosea it may be annular which is ring shaped with variations in appearance between the center and the periphery for example in tinea corporis it may be arcuate or arc shaped so this may be a portion of an annular lesion like for example in erythema multiforme then of course it may be targetoid where it looks like a target with distinct zones so as seen in erythema multiforme so here are the examples of the things that i've talked been telling you about so here's a discoid or a round lesion here is an annular lesion here is an acuate lesion. This is a targetoid lesion. You can tell the difference between the center here and the periphery. Here is an oval lesion and the uh, respective um, 
conditions where you find these lesions in. Then of course the arrangement and distribution is also very important because this may help you actually pick out the diagnosis. For example, in some lesions like viral exanthems and drug reactions, they are typically symmetrical. And in herpes simplex vesicles, they're usually grouped together. So the skin lesions may be grouped, so they may be clustered next to each other. For example, in herpes simplex, they may all be discrete or isolated, separated from one another. They may be linear, so such like you have uh, thin straight lines uh, of the lesion, for example, in poison IV dermatitis, they may be um, dermatomal, meaning that they're distributed along the dermatomes. For example, in herpes zoster, they may look like a snake. Okay, I'm not going to pronounce this word. Then, of course, this is seen in cutaneous lava migraines. They may be reticular or lace or net like. So, for example, in vasculitis, they may be symmetrical, where you get this uniform distribution on both sides of the body. Then, of course, you have a generalized appearance or disseminated appearance where it's a widespread a part of the body that is affected. For example, in drug reactions, you may also get areas that are exposed to sunlight. So, this is a photo distribution, for example, phototoxic drug reactions. So, here's an example of grouped lesions. Here, you can see linear uh, arrangement of vesicles. Here you can see a discrete lesions. Here you can see that it's moving along a dermatome. Here you can see that it appears like a snake. And then of course here this is symmetrical and generalized. This looks like a network where lace like appearance. This is reticular. Then of course this is a photo distribution um, because this is a sun exposed area. So when we are describing lesions in dermatology, it's very important that we, we mention the types of the skin lesion, the surface changes, if there are any that are present, the color of the skin lesion, the location of the lesion, the percentage of the affected body surface should be uh, documented, especially in conditions where you have extensive um, rashes that are involving large areas of the body. Then of course, the arrangement or distribution and shapes of the lesions, as this may be helpful in some cases to make a diagnosis. Here's an example of an image. So if we were to describe this image, this would be a pink, round, I know it's like brownish, pinkish, brownish, pink, brown, round plague with white scales on the volar wrist. So this was a patient that had psoriasis. Then looking at our example two, as we can see, we have the skin lesion here. We have this individual here that had the skin lesion about two centimeters from the ear. So this is a two centimeter pink plague with a slightly elevated border. And of course, there is some erosions about one centimeter from lateral to the left earlobe. And this is obviously a patient that had superficial basal cell carcinoma. So this is one way in which we de describe skin lesions. So the more you are exposed to this, the more you actually um, get used to describing the skin lesions. Dermatology uh, actually has a lot that you have to learn. So thank you for spending your time to listen to this review lecture video. If you learned a lot, please drop a like or drop a comment tell a friend to tell a friend that we are covering dermatology topics on the channel subscribe if you haven't my name is dr moses kazevu until next time bye bye